Hi everybody, welcome to the Braid and Tinker podcast. My name is Melanie and I am a knitter and this is a video cast all about my knitting. I had a hard time deciding today if I would even record um, because of everything that is currently happening in the US. Um, the subject of racism is it's something that a lot of people in the knitting community has, yeah, feel very strongly about. This is a hard time for people of colour and we as, well let me just bring it closer, as a white person I need to be respectful of that and make space for that and you know these times reinforce that you know that thought of not being racist is not enough you have to be anti-racist you have to speak out against it you have to fight it call people out on it when they are displaying racist behavior whether is that is in your home or in your family or in your workplace or you know anything that is close to you because otherwise it's not gonna work is it um yeah that feels super super inadequate but i i didn't want to just leave it and not say anything about it and i also didn't want to just oh, i'll just not record a video and then sort of like wait until it blows over because it doesn't um so yeah It feels weird to kind of move from that to business as usual. So I don't know. I've been feeling weird about it all weekend. It's Monday today. It's a bank holiday in the Netherlands. Um, it's pro probably <laughs> in more countries. I don't, I'm not sure. I have a tiny cat. We got a new cat this week and he's behind the door meowing. Um, but I don't want to let him in because he'll just destroy all of my setup. <laughs> he's lovely, he's adorable, his little cat called Gretzky. Um, yeah. Let's just get into the knitting, I guess. I have a finished object. Kinda. So I've been knitting this cardigan for my son. This is my version of the Gramps cardigan by, which is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. I knitted out of Drops Charisma. Uh, the only thing, it is finished, but I only have to add some pockets because my kid loves his pockets and he really, really wants to shove stuff in there. Um, I swapped out the neckband that was in the pattern for a garter stitch, um, kind of shawl collar, because I like that style at the moment very much and it's super super easy to knit you just uh, do short rows for a bit and then when you kind of feel like you're finished with short rows you just knit more of the band and it becomes the short collar it's like magic it's super easy uh, you could do like a stretchy bind off I don't usually do that because I feel that for me it's neater if it's just a regular bind off um, but my regular bind off is quite stretchy in itself so I don't need uh, a, a terribly stretchy bind off so that's finished I just have to do the pockets uh, which is quite easy but it's just I just have to do it um, but you pick up stitches from the um, yeah, kind of bottom of the cardigan and then you knit a flap at, up and then I just seam the sides of the uh, pocket to the cardigan and then you're finished. And I have quite some bit of yarn left so that will be um, not, so, not so hard to do. Um... My other work in progress that I have been putting quite a bit of work in but isn't really finished is this 
shawl, which is the Midsummer Rose shawl. The pattern was in a Lane magazine from, I think, last year, number four issue number four I think. The pattern is by Lena Tosti I think um, which just makes me think of grilled cheese sandwiches because that's what we use in the Netherlands as a word for grilled cheese sandwiches. Anyway um, the yarn is a peachy yarn which I dyed myself um, and it's a Rami wool silk blend and it is very, it's, it's quite shiny. I don't know if you can see it, um, but it is a bit shinier than your regular sock yarn. I know it's probably because of the silk content. So I think it's quite nice and it will be really pretty once it's blocked and spread out and dried and uh, the stitches will open up. But until that point, it just looks like a little bit of a crumpled peachy mess. Um, that's okay. It It's a fun knit and it's totally doable if you put in stitch markers for all your sections. Um, because, yeah, then it's, it's doable. But the rows are getting so, so so long and especially the pearl rows are yeah not really fun anymore so I don't know uh, I'll be glad to have this finished I am actually at the last section so it shouldn't be that much longer but it's just a question of do I have enough mental inspiration to pick it up and start working on it um and then I also had some socks on the go um some socks for my son and I had a sock snake and I cut the sock snake in two and I added toes I just have to add heels and this is also just a question of me finding the mental stamina drive I don't know what the word is Mo mental motivation to start knitting and these would these are like 99.9% .9 finished they just need heels and I just need to get on it and I just need to get off my bullshit and finish this but <sighs> oh well socks uh, yeah, so I finished my Gramps cardigan and I was kind of not in the mood for knitting on my shawl that day for whatever particular reason. And so I thought I'll just grab some yarn, some stash from my, yeah. I'll just grab some yarn from my stash and I'll grab a pattern from my queue on Ravelry and I'll knit some of that. knit some of that I'm sorry I'll knit that pattern um and so I picked up uh the mermaid top by um raging pearl wind on Instagram and I don't have the pattern because I don't print patterns uh, I usually just read them from my phone um but I am using Whoop. this yarn which is uh, something I dyed up last year myself I called it raspberry pie um, so it's a raspberry pie colorway which I dyed myself and I don't think it was last year I think it was 2018 so this has been in my stash for quite a bit and um, yeah I just never got around to doing anything with it but so I'm knitting the mermaid top out of it and that thing is I think the mermaid top came out in 2018 as well and it's been on my queue for quite a bit ever since it came out I just added it to my queue 
and also never got around to knitting it. But it is kind of like a summer top, so I think it would be quite good uh, knitting for now. It is quite warm here at the moment, so yeah, doing that. So it's a bottom-up uh, top, which makes it a little bit harder to gauge what it's going to be like and how long it is. Um, but this is just the bottom hem and it's curled up a little bit, but that will work out with blocking. Um, and I'm knitting the size large. I did debate, do I, because I think looking at the uh, chart that the size large is going to be a little bit too large. There might be too much positive ease because um, I measured myself and then I, me I looked at the at the uh, size guide in the pattern um but i think the medium would be like two kind of no ease into it so i just i just picked the large i'm also the pattern is a dk weight pattern but i didn't i don't have dk weight i think i have one skein of dk weight which is um marked for a hat uh, I don't really have DK weight anything else. I have a lot of fingering weight sash and so I'm knitting this out of fingering weight but um, it's just going to be a bit more airy and not as dense. I'm not doing anything different with like gauge wise or whatever. It's just going to be like a different fabric um, but I think it will work out fine. It's because it is um knit bottom up if i do end up feeling that it is a little bit it is getting too short i can just add rows um before i start doing uh the top section um also it is the the shoulders there are not really any shoulders in this pattern uh and i might just see how much yarn i have left over um when i get to the shoulder section um, but I might add some form of shoulder just because I like having something that kind of covers my shoulders because I'm not really just like a tiny sleeve. I I don't really like wearing sleeveless stuff. Um, I don't have the thinnest arms, which is totally fine. And I'm okay with that. I just do like having a little bit of a sleeve. Um, so I might just add some sleeves. Um... Or what I could do is leave sleeves off for now and then add the sleeves later um, when it becomes colder again after the summer and then I can wear it for a little bit longer. But that sounds like it's going to be quite complicated. Not complicated, a lot of work and a lot of steps and I probably won't do that because I'm way too lazy for that. So yeah, we'll see what happens. I think I'm just going to add some more... Um, yeah more length to the sleeves that are there and I'm using a different type of yarn and um I am doing some sort of like decreases but I'm not really following the pattern in that sense so I'm basically I got a pattern I'm doing it but I'm then changing it all the way because I'm a crazy person oh well oh this coffee is really hot it is good though. Uh, yeah. So this is living in my, mm, is this mustard or caramel? Caramel. This is living in my caramel plystra bag, which I love. I did notice, and I don't know if this is like Corona or if it's just because I've been sort of like out of knitting for so long and then I came back. Uh, but I noticed that the hide and hammer bags are totally available on whoever that person is, her website. And I really, like when they were constantly sold out all the time, I really, really wanted one, but I couldn't get one. And now I noticed that they are available. <laughs> So now I'm debating if I should get one because that's how that works, right? If you want it and it's not available, then you want it more. But if you can just go and buy one, I don't know. Maybe I'll buy one for my birthday. My birthday is August 1st and I do like getting a bag for my birthday. I got one of these fringe bags. This is the Gen 
Jen Hewitt exclusive fringe bag. I got that one for my birthday 2018, I think. I do like getting bags for my birthday for myself. It's a good present. Anyway, uh, oh, what am I wearing this week? Uh, I am wearing a weird kind of cardigan that I, yeah. I didn't really follow a pattern for this. I just grabbed some yarn and it's three different types of La bien -Aimé. And so it's this one and then this purpley one and then this orange one. And I just kind of threw it together and it turned into a summer cardigan. And I quite like it. I just think that the gauge is too, the, the fabric that it made is too loosey open. So it's good for summer, but it also pills quite quickly. Um, when you knit a fabric tighter um, with smaller needles and a tighter gauge, it rubs against each other. The stitches rub against each other a lot less and then that means less pilling. Um, but if you knit something that is very sort of like like this, it's very open. Can you see that? Stitches are quite big. Um, this was 100% because I'm lazy and uh, I just wanted to finish something quickly. And so because it's, yeah, because it's like that, it, um, it just pills quicker. So that's that. I have a gleaner and I used it this week to glean because I did at some point. So I had this cardigan for my son, but I, uh, have knit this before the Gramps cardigan pattern in a mustard color for him. And he wears it all the time. It's just getting a bit small. So I wanted to knit another one in a bigger size and because it wears it all the time, it does get a bit pilly. Um, and I used the gleaner this week and I like, pulled off a whole, like this whole big sort of ball shaped of fluff. Uh, and it looked way better afterwards, but this is kind of not very delicate yarn. I'm not sure how the gleaner will be on this, which is, you know, single ply merino. It's, oh. Just noticed there's a loose stitch, so I need to fix that today. Eh? Um, but the single ply merino, um, you know, hand dye might be a bit more uh, sensitive to a gleaner. I do feel it's a little bit aggressive. If you don't know what it is, a gleaner. So, oh, this is all the um, mustardy color stuff from my son's cardigan but it's like this thing and you kind of shave the pills off fabric and then you can sort of brush brush all the loose bits off with this end and it does come with different attachments i'm not sponsored by gleaner at all actually so i'm not sure why i'm telling you all of this but it does come with different attachments i'm i'm like imagining that some of these are a little bit less aggressive than the standard one i'm just haven't figured out which one's which um i do i like it a lot i do find though that if you are a bit rough like me um it's this bit you kind of push this and then this comes loose and there's like these hooks that hold this bit in you kind of if you want to do it quite roughly you kind of have to pull this back and then this doesn't come loose but otherwise you run the risk of this kind of just flying everywhere so anyway um ultimate fuzz remover the gleaner it does work it works as advertised so it is quite nice it removes fuzz um yeah, that's it in terms of knitting. I have so much stash yarn, so I haven't been buying any yarn. I want to get through some of my stash yarn. I have, this is some great yarn that I was gifted. 
by Susie, who was in the Netherlands last year. She is a viewer of the podcast and she messaged me saying that she would be in the Netherlands. She lives in the US. Um, and would, she, would I be okay with meeting her? And of course, I was totally up for that. And then she gave me um, some of this hand spun and it's made in Rwanda. Really, really beautiful yarn. It is 100% organic merino and it's very soft and squishy. And I have the perfect um, pattern to knit with this. I want to make like a big shawl with it. I have three of them. One is a bit darker colour, but I think it'll be fine in the shawl. Really, and I have so much nice yarn. Like, just looking at my stash, which is kind of all over the house, actually, but most of it's here. In this bag, I have this amazing mooka yarn that my sister gave me a long time ago um which is romanian merino it's very squishy and i have a lovely set of this brooklyn G tweed shelter in this brown colorway which i really really like i was going to make a cowl out of this and it never happened and some lopy leftover lopy and there's I just have so much like I have this amazing yarn which is how many grams is this it's so massive so this is 270 grams um yeah this is by blue moon fiber arts I was gifted this I I really really like it I don't really know what to do with it though because I think for a garment for me it would be too small but maybe like a big shawl would be great I do really really like the color I think it suits me maybe um yeah so I have so much nice yarn what I'm trying to say is I shouldn't be buying yarn. So I've been looking and I've been seeing that people have been posting stuff that is really, really nice on Instagram, but I haven't been buying. Um, I feel like I should just make some space. And I have, I have nice yarn and I should knit with it um, because just buying it and accumulating it is just pointless, isn't it? I think anyway. like this crazy crazy like this is labeled sock yarn but I think it's too pretty for socks I'm not sure I also have like a lot of people in my sort of surroundings who are like expecting babies who have, or have had just had babies or have young people in their lives and I was watching the Stranded podcast with Amy and she was knitting like all these like baby sweaters and baby blankets and that makes me think oh I really should do that and I should knit other people baby sweaters and stuff like that and I was also watching last night um Drunk Knitter Drunk Knitter podcast and she just had a lovely baby boy and she was knitting these tiny shawls as baby bibs. I think they looked adorable so um, I think I might knit something like that as well. Actually I think she might have a pattern for that. I need to rewatch that. She was also making ba baby, bu baby bucket hats uh, which looked super cute and really good for in summer. So I might knit some of those as well for my sister's baby bucket hat. So many plans, so much quarantine time to knit. Oh well, um, that was it for this week. I'm sure it was a little bit unhinged, um, but it's nothing unusual. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this episode, please press the like button or consider subscribing if you feel like it. And I hope to speak to you all again soon. Bye.